Friends and family call me Hubert, or just chef. I grew up in France, Alsace to be exact, in the Riboville, a beautiful medieval town with less than 5,000 people. We lived on the top floor of my parents' patisserie. Can you imagine what I ate as a child? I love cars and bikes of any kind and music. But my first love, besides my wife Chantal, will always be cooking. This love I have followed to many different cities. Rio de Janeiro, everyone's favorite food city, San Francisco. And now, Las Vegas, my adopted hometown. Of course, I am known for French food at my restaurant Fleur, but I have always secretly loved a great burger, so I did something about that. Las Vegas is truly one of the most exciting food cities in the world. So now, eating has also become my passion. Along with cooking. And I do have my favorites. On today's show, I'm taking you to three of them. First, we're heading to Spring Mountain Road, the place insiders know as some of Las Vegas' best restaurants. First up is at Raku, a Japanese restaurant where the seafood is flown in daily from Japan and cooked on an authentic robata grill. You won't find this kind of food very often in the United States. Chef owner Mitsuo Endo has created food that is mouth-watering and delicious. I've never had anything like this before. This is so good. I'm having a moment right now. <laughs> <laughs> then we will take it on the street to Modeo place you can find Las Vegas chefs enjoying Spanish-style tapas cooked with an Asian flair. And wait until you see the wine collection. Meet Chef Kai Vu, known as the king of Spring Mountain Road. Chef Kai grabs all these different spices and flavors from his travel and make it just magical on the plate. He's showing us how he makes one of the signature dishes, a beautiful grilled whole branzino. Our final stop is to the Aria Patisserie, the place to get some of the best French pastries in Las Vegas. It's the real deal. And best of all, it never closes. We are eating, living, and loving Las Vegas. Hubert Keller, Secrets of a Chef, is made possible by Cuisinart, makers of the Cuisinart Elemental 13-cup dicing food processor with dicing, slicing, and shredding discs and a wide mouth feed tube for whole fruits and vegetables. Cuisinart, savor the good life. Chinatown may very well be Las Vegas' best-kept culinary secret. Far from the glitz of Las Vegas casinos, Spring Mountain Road is lined with endless rows of ordinary strip malls. But dig deeper and you will find hidden gems with countless choices of great Vietnamese, Thai, Japanese, Korean, and of course, Chinese food. There may be countless choices, but we chefs do have our favorites. And a huge favorite is Raku. Don't be fooled by Raku's small size, unassuming atmosphere or casual decor. On any given night, you will find celebrity chefs taking advantage of Raku's 3 a.m. closing time. And what many believe is the very best Japanese food in all of Las Vegas. It earned its stellar reputation as a grill house specializing in Japanese robata grilling and with its superb seafood offerings. I'm originally from Japan. You won't find this kind of food very often in the United States. It's a creativity and also very authenticity. I have seen so many celebrity chefs 
come here and then they enjoy this food so much. My good friend Aaron and I were ready for a tasting. <laughs> and of course, some sake. Oh, hello. Uh, Hi, how are you? This one's? I got the Junmai Daiginjo Kirinzan. Raku's extensive sake offerings are known around town. They have nearly 100 varieties. Cheers. Cheers. Very great experience. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, Can't yeah. wait. Oh, Hello, Chef. Omega. Chef Endo, how are we doing? Hey. Thank Chef you, thank you for having oh, us. Thank you very much for having us. Oh, we're happy to be here, really. Chef Mitsuo Endo and his restaurants are legend in the Las Vegas culinary community. He himself doesn't speak much English, but his food speaks volumes. Man, that looks good, right? Right. All right, mix it all together. What a beautiful and artful combination. Sea urchin, salmon roe, poached egg, yam potatoes and mushroom, all swimming in a fragrant soba dashi broth. I've never had anything like this before. This is so good. The sea urchin, so creamy. I love sea urchin. I love the texture of the egg, right? And I think it's really what's magical here is that combination of ingredients. Yeah, each on their own is good, but together they're even better. It's a feast. Our next dish was a whole grilled catfish. Raku is a traditional Japanese grill house. The kitchen has an authentic Japanese grill with charcoal imported from Japan called Binchontan. A wide variety of meat, seafood, and vegetables are cooked with butter style or with super hot charcoals. The Bichotan charcoal cooks food at higher temperatures with less moisture than other charcoal. It was mouth-watering. A crispy salt crust encased the moist morsels of perfectly cooked fish. It's great. The fish looks fantastic. We couldn't wait to dig in. A bit of the Maya lemon on it, right? Yeah. So good. With it's that. like a fatty fish, right? And then once you get the skin with it, right? So and good. a little salty part yeah. of it. Yeah. I think it's an experience, right? It's so really, good. really, really delicious. I've never seen anything like this. So good. The real cool thing here about Raku is the fish is actually flown fresh from Japan, so believe it or not, the only place in Las Vegas where you're going to get that. Yeah, it's not only the charcoal, but the fish as well. Really, really good. <laughs> Nobody would have thought you'd find that right in the middle of the desert here, right? But it's so good. Everyone needs to know about this place. I wonder what's going to be next. It's going to be exciting. Right, right I know. I can't wait. Just what I was waiting for. A beautiful sampling from Raku's Bada Grill. Everything had been cooked on Raku's grill with the super hot bean shot on Japanese charcoals, picking up the wonderful deep flavors. An amazing array of things here. Huh? I think we probably should start off with uh, the asparagus, with yeah. the bacon, which is very famous here. And who doesn't love bacon, right? So yeah. everything goes with bacon. Everything is more better with bacon. Salty, crunchy. Yeah. <laughs> no much to talk about except it's really good and it works, right? I mean, the spar gets a little texture to it, mm -hmm. right? It's not completely cooked through, and then, and then the bacon is right on the perfect spot. Anything goes with bacon, right? <laughs> so here we are, actually have some A5 Wagyu beef, so that's oh. really exciting, right? Right. And again, cooked over that very special charcoal, nice and uh, rare. So I'm excited to taste that. Delicious. Just melts in your mouth. There's almost no word to describe that comparing to beef. I mean, it's like the ultimate beef tasting we can do here, right? I'm having a moment right now. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we had a grilled ground chicken. They looked like lollipops. In true Japanese tradition, Chef Ando served it with a dip of poached egg mixed with soy sauce.
the texture is perfect, right? From the grind chicken, it's very airy, very light. The grind is very fine, very right? Very fine. Yes. Just yes. yes. And I think that egg yolk is wrapped around, makes the whole difference, right? An amazing experience, huh? But there's one more item so that good. keeps yeah. chefs like myself coming back over and over again. Excuse me? I have agedashi tofu. It's Chef's Endo homemade tofu. What a beautiful presentation. He serves it with sirgeon, caviar, salmon roe, and chili paste. The tofu had a silky fragrant and nutty flavor. It would be so hard to go back to store-bought tofu after eating Chef's Endo's. When was the last time you had some tofu with caviar and sea urchin on it, right? The sweet, the salty, the crunchy. So this dish will change your life. It was amazing. Wow. Once again, you spoiled us. No, really, really, really spoiled us. I just can want to thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you so much. Really, you, chef. <laughs> so fantastic. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, sir. It's on Spring Mountain Road, near Las Vegas Chinatown, a neighborhood where the city's top chefs have been secretly dining for years. It's a place where you go to relax and unwind in a modern and elegant setting. A place to drink great wine and indulge in super good food. Luis de Santos is the general manager and founder of Mordeo. Mordeo is Latin for small bites. He's also a master sommelier. Looking good. I jumped at a chance salad. to check out his beautiful old glass wine room, which sits in the center of the restaurant. Yes, Chef. We, we have a bit of uh, close to about 500 bottles that we can put in here, and it just kind of uh, rotate as, uh, as the bin opens okay. up. Our focus here at Mardea are locals, but specifically in the industry. Industry in the restaurants, in the gaming area, as they work long hours to stop by on their way home for a glass of wine and perhaps small bites. We chose a wine bar concept, which is unusual off the strip. It's really the inspiration we got from Spain in Bocaria, where everything's all counter seatings, and you just be sitting side by side with your friends and family. At Mordeo, diners feel like they are part of the kitchen action, especially when they have a chance to interact with star chef Kai Vu. He is the reason Mordeo is a favorite of Las Vegas chefs and industry professionals. Mordeo is Chef View's third restaurant in Chinatown, earning him the nickname King of Spring Mountain Road. Chef Kai has a magical simplicity to his cooking. He grabs all these different spices and flavors from his travel and he really puts it together and make it just magical in a plate. And I often come for Chef View's magic with my good friend Sam Glazier. Here, right? Yeah. I really actually love how they designed this. Well, hello, gentlemen. Hello, chef. How are you? Hi, how are we doing? Good, good. Welcome. Great thank to have you. you thank today. you. Thank you. Oh, hello, right. Sam. Good, good to see you, you Kai. Thanks for having us. Thank All right. You, thank you. You're going to join us? This is beautiful, Kai. Our first dish was a tiradito. I think we should dig hey, in. Enjoy. Let's do it. All right, Sam. Thin slices here, here. of raw trout thank you. garnished with olives, pickled onions, and a garlic chip. Truffle soy, right? Yes. Yeah. Wow. I mean, first I get the truffle, right? But it's very subtle, it's beautiful, right? And the soy, those little pickled onions, right? That yeah. really makes a difference, yeah. right? And of course, the fish by itself, the trout, is 
really good. Great start, it's I great. guess. A great start. How, how did you come up with that idea? Yeah, so it's from uh, my uh, traveling. So I've been to Spain and Japan, and you know, so I like. I love their style of food, very small bite, and uh, let the ingredients speak for itself. And I understand you do travel a lot, right? But originally, you are a Viet Vietnamese chef, right? Yes, for my Saigon. I mean, it really shows. I mean, that is like going to Spain when I taste that, really. Chef, what an interesting job merging the Spanish-style tapas with a Japanese truffle soy flavor. Really, really cool. Thank and you. Rodeo yeah. offers the ultimate in Spanish tapas. Ramon Iberico de Belota. It's considered the highest quality ham in the world and comes from the famous black Iberian pigs in southern Spain, which are fed only acorns. Thank you for being so generous. <laughs> Thank you. And Sam, is your lucky day. <laughs> I love it. Thank you for serving one of a kind of a ham, right? It's like probably the most expensive ham in the world, I would say. Uh, <laughs> it is. <Yeah. laughs> I think we should try it. I think I'm gonna dig in just with. Do it. That's how they do it in Spain. That's right, exactly. Yeah. That is crazy good. <laughs> really, it is, right? Those rich flavors, kind of nutty and a little sweetness, I would say, yeah. and earthy. It's, it's just amazing. So, like I said, it's crazy good and crazy expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, did you try it? For anyone who hasn't tried Iberico ham, it's such a different experience. Everyone has to try it at least once. It's so good. Our next dish was another tapas treat. Clams and mussels with chorizo in a beautiful white wine sauce. So this is very uh, uh, Spanish influence when I went to Barcelona last year, and I have something similar, and it just stick with me, then, uh, so I came back, then I tried to gather all the ingredients and get, put a little twist of my own on it, and uh, here we are. All right, so now we're gonna dig in. Little baguette. Thank you. Voila. And then Make sure you scoop up the broth. Sort of Sam, you have a spoon? I think we should dig in and just have like a big spoon of the broth. Yeah. That's when you get the dish right. <laughs> right? It's awesome. It's really awesome. All right. It's really an amazing dish. I really love it for its flavors and texture and the richness and the flavor is definitely in the broth, right? The combination of clams and mussels in the same dish is really interesting to me. And I've had so many tough chewing clams and mussels over the years. To have this come out really tender and, and well executed is a really, really delightful dish. Thank you. There's another dish I always love to eat at Mordeo, whole grail branzino. I was excited when Chef Yu offered to show me how he's making it. So what we have here is uh, branzino and right. very simple uh, prep. Get a little olive oil, a little salt, pepper, and you know a little butter to keep it moist when we grill over the charcoal. All right. And a little thyme. So I already see that you had deboned the fish prior, right? And then when it comes to the amount of butter, it could be almost a French dish. <laughs> yes. Now I'm gonna put in the group basket. All right, here we go. And it takes about 15 to 18 minutes for it to be ready. Hey, I see you're actually using uh, some Japanese charcoal in there. So yes, what yeah. is so special about it? And it creates very high intense heat. So when you grill it, it, it still and it lock in the flavor. I can't wait to try it actually later you on. Know, it's gonna be delicious, I'm sure. Yes, sir. Yeah. Chef Vu had prepared fingerling potatoes fried with chopped garlic and parsley to accompany the branzino. Looking good. Yeah. 
All right, so I'm, I can see you putting some grilled uh, lemon on it also. Mm, yeah. And, then, and some uh, parsley. parsley. And a little smoked paprika. Oh. It really adds a little nice. Smoked paprika, you said, right? Yes. Oh, okay. And a little sea salt. Not much. Oh, mix it. Bit. And finishing olive oil. It's one of those recipes, probably, that really the simplicity talks back, right? In a yes. sense of flavors and, and a nice, nice skin. Let me just. And look how moist it is. It's beautiful. You really taste the fish, right? That's, that's what it is and the thyme. And of course, the butter doesn't hurt either, right? Yeah. And then of course, when with a potato, it is a perfect dish like, like you would eat in Spain, right? Next yeah. to the water, right? Mm -hmm. But here in Las Vegas. <laughs> Las Vegas is known for being a city that never sleeps, but always eats, especially when you can get any time of the day or night, 24 seven, pastries, chocolates, gelato, and crepes at the famous patisserie at the Aria Hotel. Okay, I admit it, I have a powerful sweet tooth. So for me, this place is paradise. Row after row of beautiful and delicious delicacies. Dozens of candies. Every flavor of gelato you can think of. And magical displays that dazzle people of any age. My tour guide today was executive pastry chef Mathieu Lavalle. He makes sure that every item in the store is the best it can be. Wow! All the good stuff that I love, really. <laughs> yeah, everything is made uh, in the kitchen, right uh, here, right here, area, right here, using couverture from Europe and other very fine ingredients. It was a beautiful selection of handcrafted chocolates, bonbons and truffles. There were so many flavors and filling to choose from. The chocolate dipped strawberries looked luscious. Like any great French patisserie, there was a wonderful assortment of macarons. I knew just what I wanted. I think seeing the display, I really got to try at least one. I might go with a coffee. Okay. A coffee macaron. Great. All right, thank you. I think just by the way, just by touching it, you already start knowing it is the right macaron, yeah. right, the right texture, consistency. And, and the flavor, perfect. And here we're in Las Vegas, and I really thought the macaron is coming straight from Paris. Thank you. <laughs> mm. uh, Hubert, this is our gelato case of uh, for uh, Aria Patisserie. Uh, we have... Uh, over uh, 20 different flavors. 20 kinds of flavors? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and depending on the, they change the seasonally and uh, they're made uh, in-house. Everything's made in-house. All from scratch, right? Yeah, from, from the scratch. It was not surprising they offered gelato instead of traditional ice cream. Like ice cream, gelato is also made with milk, cream and sugar, but has a smoother and creamier texture. Unlike ice cream, gelato has less cream and no egg yolks. It is served at a warmer temperature, allowing flavors to come through better. They look fantastic. It's just amazing, right, that we're finding this right here. I think. So, Hubert, here's our crepe station. For, uh, and we offer uh, sweet and savory crepes. OK. All right. Well, that sounds great. I think we should go with apple. Apple. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we watch the crepes come together right before our eyes. Looks good, right? Yeah. <laughs> A chunky caramelized apple filling was piled high on the finished crepe. They finished it with a rich caramel sauce, followed by a sprinkle of powdered sugar. And there was more. It was crowned with luscious whipped cream.
That is decadent, right? <laughs> Caramelized apple, caramelized gala apples, whipped cream, brown sugar strudel. Speechless, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love the, that flavor like you're just describing. The caramel is beautifully done, the apples, I mean, it's a great combination. And of course, once you top it with whipped cream, right, you can't go wrong. This is so good. It is really delicious. All right. Hubert, here's our French uh, pastry display for uh, the, the patisserie. And it's, it's I mean, when I see that, I'm like a child, right? It's like in a candy store. They are so beautiful, colorful, very precise and so inviting. It looked just like the pastries you would find in patisseries all over France. Beautiful millefeuilles, napoleons, eclairs, paris breasts, and tarts. So we have some American classics like cheesecake and carrot cake, uh, some uh, Asian flavors like green tea. Oh yeah, which one is yeah, that? Yeah, like a green tea roll cake oh, yeah, over yeah. here. And of course, Mathieu, there have to be a beautiful display of French viennoiserie, right? Because that's what it is, it's spectacular. Viennoiserie are yeast leavened pastries such as croissants, brioche buns with fillings, and petit pain au chocolat or au raisin. What a great assortment. You have even the Nutella brioche, which is your little twist, probably. Yeah, it's a little, <laughs> a little twist. It uh, has a, uh, it's a brioche filled with Nutella and has a, little, a cookie dough on top, baked on top together. Uh, and we have, we have almond croissants, some American classics. Croissants are always favorites here at our patisserie. I cannot say I have a favorite. Too many to choose from. But don't be surprised if you find me there at 2 o'clock in the morning eating another crepe. I can eat that all day long. <laughs> no, really. Hubert Keller, Secrets of a Chef, is made possible by Cuisinart. Makers of the Cuisinart Elemental 13-cup dicing food processor with dicing, slicing, and shredding discs and a wide-mouth feed tube for whole fruits and vegetables. Cuisinart. Savor the good life.